Hello, everyone, and welcome back to part two of Create Expectations. So if you have not watched part one, you should go do that on Zara's channel, which is linked below, and you can watch it and, and like and subscribe and do all the fun things and leave a comment. Yeah, and then come yeah. back here for part two. Mount it up, yeah. Yeah, and where we're just going to continue talking about more fun things. Yeah, there's so many fun things. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I use my sarcastic voice, but there actually are fun things. So, <laughs> uh, um, so do we want to start with you got you got an interesting question? Um, yeah. Oh and I'll, yeah. So I'll let you deal with it. Or well, well, first, it. first, why don't we say there were no questions this time, right. guys? We need we need comment questions, viewer questions, whatever you can ask them on. Uh, YouTube uh, in either of our comments er comment sections, or you can go to the Discord server, which is linked in the video description here, or on my video uh, on my half of this uh, crate episode. And uh, it, there's like a whole channel devoted to just viewer questions. So a ask away, guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, we we went through a bunch of them last week, and and now here we are. Yeah, people just didn't like the answers. They they couldn't handle the truth. <laughs> um, but okay but i actually did like this question that you got so if you want to paraphrase it sure okay so my my uh good friend dismas who has been a supporter of my channel since like from the very first back back before i even knew i wanted to be a content creator at all um you know he he was asking like all of his galactic legends are relic seven and he thinks that they need to be boosted a little bit. Uh, you know, like, what order should Galactic Legends go in? Like, what 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 order should you upgrade them? Like, Relic 7 is probably, like, the bare minimum that you should put gla take a Galactic Legend to. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you have a Galactic Legend, then you, we know you're capable of getting Relic 7, because all of them require at least some Relic 7. So get them to 7, and then... Who who should go to eight and nine first? Right. So, does he have all? He's got all seven. Uh, let's just assume he does. I I don't know for okay. sure. Okay, just out of out of curiosity. Um, I mean, this is so loaded because obviously, every GL benefits from going up, relic levels. They do. They absolutely do. Um. Some more than others, though. Right. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so where where do we where do you want to start here? Do you want to talk about relic eight, relic nine? Well, I, what I, what I want to say is the first thing you should be paying attention to, <laughs> and I think I think you you would agree is my guess is I think Jedi Master Luke should should just like yeah you should just go from seven all the way to nine right. if you can like right. don't and don't know, stop at eight right. Well, just because he gets such a huge, crazy huge boost from eight to nine, like it, it is, uh, in my opinion, like obviously he's not a required relic nine for anything, but he is, uh, in my opinion, like he's the unspoken required relic nine. Like my alt has yeah. two relic nines. He has uh, Adrad, so that mm -hmm. I could get unlock profundity, and he has. Uh, Jedi Master Luke, because it's just so crazy overpowered to go from eight to nine. I also have two Relic Nines, and for the exact same reason. So, yeah, that that's yeah. and I think uh, so. Jedi Master Luke was my first Relic Nine, and I think I would one hundred percent put him at like this is who you do first out of your GLs. To nine. Absolutely. Even if it's like, well, you have to get them all to eight first. Like Jedi Master Luke first. Right. And then, and then, I, if you have to pause, that's fine. But I, the rest of them can stay at Relic Seven, in my opinion, and just get mm -hmm. him to nine because his impact on every game mode is tremendous, and it's all contingent on how much protection he has, and he gains a crazy amount of protection going from eight to nine because he's a tank. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay, so Jedi Master Luke aside, mm -hmm. who would you do next? Oh, okay, so I said the. Uh, how about you go next? Okay. Who who would you do next? Um, man, 
I think I would go with either. I'm torn. Um, between three. Do you go Ray, Lord Vader, or Jabba? I mean, th those are those are certainly. It's so it's so hard for me to wrap my mind around because it. I, I guess I'll 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 just preface this by saying. My alt has Jedi Master Kenobi, and he's been just fine at Relic 7. I have no right. need to take him higher than that, really. Like, in principle, I should, I guess. But even my main account has all Galactic Legends at Relic 9, mm -hmm. except for Kenobi, who's 8. Yeah, my, my Kenobi is still 7. And, like, I don't even oh. realize that he's 7 until I try to go use him in territory battles. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, I <laughs> yep. can't, <laughs> That's I can't you use it. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, if you're talking about territory battles, like, he is really important to get to eight. In fact, like, the whole team is really strong at eight. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, like, so let's just, let's just, like, put him at last place. So Jedi Master Luke, top mm -hmm. spot, Kenobi in back spot. And then right. I would say right now, if, if everything else is at seven, mm -hmm. I would do Jabba to eight first. I feel like Jabba is more important. <laughs> Right. I mean, you're using him everywhere. He has a mission in every phase of territory battles. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it is like granted I haven't gone past phase 4, so I don't can't speak to um you know, phases right. 5 and 6 obviously, but it is insane how smooth his missions are even without a full hut cartel squad. Like I just yep. I, I literally ran a team that was him, um, I think it was him, Boba, Star Killer, Darth Vader, and Palpatine, <laughs> I wanna say. Like the <laughs> it's most just like there's no synergy here <laughs> yeah. other than Boba. There's zero zero synergy and two out of two waves. Yeah. Like you could almost just hit auto. You're good. Yeah, I was like, this is fine. Like mm -hmm. it's kind of silly. Um and then obviously you've got Territory War, Grand Arena, Conquest, the new raid. Right. Well, and, and the thing that I've been kind of preaching lately for Jabba too is is like, yes, he he's good at Relic, you know, seven, and everyone else is five or whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, he he's one of those squads that really really loves extra relics on the entire squad. Mm -hmm. uh, the more you thicken them, the more timeouts people are gonna have on your squad like it's right uh, uh, making him relic nine is uh you know like my my alt i think i'm gonna try i'm gonna spend like a whole month or maybe maybe even longer just trying to get, work on that one squad mm -hmm. trying to get them a bunch of relic uh you know eights and nines because they they're it's warranted people really really struggle against a super thick jabba and so getting them getting the relics uh pretty good stuff yeah that's a good point who would you do next? So I don't have Lord Vader yet, but I know that a lot of people like to give him more relics. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I can't speak to like personal experience with it. Uh, I, I can explain it a little bit. So uh, like the, so he's one of those characters too. So he benefits from when he pops his ult, mm -hmm. uh, he gains mastery based off of how many characters are still alive on his team and what their relic levels are oh so you want more relic levels on his whole team as well R right uh but like he's also going to ramp his damage a lot better at mm -hmm. if he's at higher relics like he's and not to mention he's crazy tanky but it, like it, it's a noticeable difference like when my alt is trying to kill like my, my main account only faces relic nines but Right. My my alt when he's trying to kill a relic seven Lord Vader it's like oh he's he's dead already that was cute, uh, right? But, but like <laughs> relic nine I'm like I don't know if we can do this guys like finishing this guy off is tough like you can still do it but it, it's a fight man the, it's a struggle like it, it's a noticeable difference even going from eight to nine it's <laughs> uh, it's very worthwhile. Yeah, so I feel like he would probably be next. Yeah, though I would say like if if we're all at seven, yeah. I would go like, l like you said, like uh, you know, Lord Vader. To, I'd, I'd take him to eight, and then mm -hmm. I'd work on Ray to eight. Yeah, I I Next. think that's that's what I was thinking is Ray, 
after. And I, I have her at eight, and I love it. Yeah, I remember. I looked at your roster. I was like, why isn't she at seven? Or why is she in eight yet? And you're like, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to be doing that soon. I was like, good, good choice. Like, she's mm-hmm. she is so stat hungry, like crazy. I mean, all of them are. But, like, she, the thing is, her relics answer directly like they give her the stats she wants the most you know yeah. like some some galactic legends it's like well yeah I, I, what i really want is you know like potency or something um right. you know it's like you don't get that from relics but with her you get health and you get offense and going that's from what... seven to eight that's that's a huge boost it's just right there yeah that's what she wants that's what she cares about yep not to mention her whirlwind her her big hit mm-hmm. not not her ult hit but her big hit is based off of how many relic levels she has. Mm-hmm. So, and for that reason, like, not that I would I would take her to Relic 9, but she would be a good candidate for Relic 9 because of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I used to complain. Like, I, I thought you know, she was going to get phased out, kind of, because, uh, you know, as, like, her ultimate doesn't scale super crazy well because as as things progress and the game progresses, like, she does an ultimate, and it used to be like, oh yeah, she'll just wipe out a full team that she's facing now. Mm-hmm. She does it because it's all spread out among five characters. So all five. So if you're facing a bunch of characters that are relic nines, mm-hmm. and she's relic nine, it doesn't do that. It doesn't have that big of an impact. Um, so I used to complain about that, but then they added the stuff about the whirlwind scaling damage as her relic level does, and that's individual damage on individual targets and. Yeah, it's nice. It's a, it does scale really nicely. So, right. yeah. Relic 9, absolutely one of your first candidates, in my opinion, yeah. for 9. Um, so, okay, so Kenobi's last, and then, so you basically are between C and Kylo now. Hmm. We didn't miss anyone else? I don't think so. Okay. No, I don't think so. Cool. Um, who do you think? I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I'm just okay. curious. I was going to say, I think I would do C before Kylo. Uh, yeah, so Sith Eternal, I just see him as like a like a time bomb, kind of. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's just like a really cool version of Nihilus. Like if Nihilus survives, he kills something really important. If Sith Eternal survives, he kills two things really important. Right. But the key is to make him survive. Right. And so, you know, you get the armor, you get extra health, and, uh, yeah, just more survivability. Yeah. And then you don't have to worry about getting real close to getting your ultimate off, but ultimately dying. Right. Uh, Though I will say, Supreme Leader Kylo, there's a good argument, because he really Mm -hmm. likes health and offense as well, just like Rey. Right. You know, uh, like... He doesn't keep his squad alive, so they're all going to die. And <laughs> he doesn't so care. No, he do, it really doesn't. It, they actually matched his lore really nicely with his, with his <laughs> kit. But, uh, you know, it's all about him. Uh, like, mm-hmm. he just gets personally powerful. But you want, you want to have good base numbers to be able to build off of. And so, you know, like, as he, as he progresses through, he's, um, yeah, he, he gets... You kind of want you want that foundation of of base stats, so you know, like good stuff to have everyone at higher relics, uh, mm-hmm. all the Galactic Legends. But yeah, I mean, he wants more damage. Of course, he does. So does everyone. Right. So, I yeah, I guess you're right though that those two would be interchangeable, and then Kenobi's at the end. Poor Kenobi. Poor Kenobi, or Happy Kenobi. He's he's just low maintenance. I mean, at, at the end of the day, that's not a bad thing because, especially if you feel like the relic crunch, right? Y- you know that it's fine if you leave him there. That's just funny. Like I, I would almost advise people to get like cat to relocate before I would Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> but as I've commonly said recently, uh, Kenobi is just the lifter unit for cat, anyways. Yeah, yeah sad that is sad oh man um, so yeah yeah we, we spent a long time on that question wow you're welcome dismiss <laughs> it's an interesting question um it is okay so do we want to look at the pack 
in game. Uh, yeah, we're in the game. Whoa. 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 Madness. Crazy. Um, so I think there are like five, probably will be four and a half ish days left on this by the time this comes out. Uh, but you've got the data, this lovely data cache pack. It's 550 curtains or 550 crystals. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. And it gets you data cache. So you have five, it looks like you have five. Um, five data rolls cards. On it. Yeah. Five rolls on it that you're going to pull. So mm -hmm. uh, the minimum being 250,000, the highest one being 1.25 million. Uh, so you're going to end up with at least 1.25 million out of 550 crystals. Yeah. Uh, two over, I don't know, what's 1.25 times five? Six something? 1.25 times five. Yeah. 6.25? Something like that. Let's say it's 6.25. Um, it so. is. <laughs> this is interesting, though, because this would theoretically free up. If you're looking at refreshing in Conquest. Mm-hmm. It theoretically frees up your crystals to either refresh elsewhere or not refresh at all. Uh, right. So, well, I, I want to hear what your thoughts are on this because you you don't like data crons as much as I do, um, right. or PvP. You like conquest, but to you, it's it's just conquest. It's it's not cron quest like for me. Correct. Um. So I'm actually curious about this because, so for me. I'm hovering near the, the like, like I think I have like 25 million data cache right now. Right. Um, and I do need to go through and spend some on, on some of the data crons. So it will go down a little bit, but I know I don't have enough mats for it to go down significantly that this would be necessarily like worthwhile, quote unquote. Um, but I feel like if you are going heavy and conquest as cronquest as you said then it would be worthwhile because then you could focus like instead of refreshing consistently in sector one because you need the data cache or whatever you could get those mats because because like okay so like you said i'm not too focused in pvp or the data crons and all like I'll, i have them it's mm -hmm. not the currency that is lacking that it has me lacking right now on upgrading them. It is the other materials. Right. So if I can spend <clears throat> that those crystals on the other materials exclusively, mm -hmm. then I feel like this makes sense. Yeah. So uh, for my main account, this this is probably one of the most important packs you can have, frankly. Right. Um, you know, I because I'm fully invested in data con data crons, and um, I I do uh, so. The biggest burnout point for me when I'm farming data crons is when I run out of data cache. Like we have the dusting, and I'll, everything goes away uh, from whatever the previous set is, mm -hmm. and, and so I can immediately because I, I do a bunch of extra refreshes uh, to get the materials. I, I can immediately get a bunch of data crons. Uh, from the new set, but then when I run out of cash, like it takes for freaking ever to farm on sector one, and I I just can't do it. I, it's so boring. It is awful. The the right. most awful thing. And uh, so if if I can just spend some crystals doing this, mm -hmm. it it is just tremendously helpful. Honestly, like I I I buy this. You know, I I wouldn't say I just spam this button, but I do. If, if there's one pack that I spend, that I buy multiple times every month, it's probably this one on my main. Mm -hmm. Even on my alt, I, I haven't done it yet for this this season. I think I did it last, uh, la like when I was farming set six. I think I did it a couple times, though, because it's, um, it's just really helpful to be able to focus on those mats and um, getting what you need. And so, so you mentioned like a, a good point about spamming the button, because this looks like there's no limit on it. Like it doesn't say that there's a limit. Oh, there's no limit, man. You can... You can just uh, buy away. I mean, Datacrons, I, I feel like they did a good job of 
first off, they alienated all the player base because they're like, hey, do this. And then half the, most of the player base can't even access Datacrons. It's like, yeah, I have like two teams that can even use one. Right. So why would I bother? I don't even see anyone use them here. You know, where I'm at in the game, like once you get to Kyber 3, it's like, you know, it's just like a ghost town for Datacrons. So there are even people like who can equip them that don't. Well, because they don't need to, because it's all an even playing field. Why would you bother with a thing if if everyone's like, yeah, we're not going to do that. But, but like, at the top levels, and the way I play my alt, you know, like, Professor X is in Kyber 2, a lot of that has to do with me using strategic, you know, making strategic use of the, the low-hanging fruit on the Datacrons. And so, uh, you know, the, this this is an important upgrade for them, or for mm -hmm. that account. Uh, but, but, like... it. It made so, the whole player base so angry about Datacrons, and then, like, not not a, lot, a very small percentage of them actually use them at all, or can access them, uh, which is funny. But then, they did a great job of just super milking a certain, like, a very, like, one of the, you know, like, the top one or two percent of the game, mm -hmm. who just go completely overboard. Like, my, my main account probably has, I bet I have, like, somewhere around 12-ish of set 7. Um, but there are people who already have 30. Which is crazy. Uh, of uh, you know, They've already done a bunch of, re like, the reroll pack that we're not looking mm -hmm. at right now. Like, mm -hmm. that one, people just spam that one. Whew, it's crazy, man. And, like, you can only have 30 from a set, right? Yeah, like, there are people who are just done for the set already. <laughs> yeah, they're they're good, happy to go, and carry on. Right. Well, well, they're done buying all all the crons, but then they also, but then then it's the reroll game, right? So and and you never get per, like thirty perfect crons. So, you know there there is there are some people who are crazy invested in this, and that that's why dodge will come back because people are gonna, you know, Ugh. that reroll game to get hundred percent dodge. It's it's just too tempting for some people. No, no, please no. Agreed. I. I... <laughs> Please, no. I like Datacrons and a lot of what they do to the meta and a lot, lot like there's a ton of really cool interesting things to them for PvP reasons mm -hmm. and dodge is poison and I hate it and we should kill it with fire thank you thank you um, you're welcome so thumbs up though for this pack especially obviously if you are invested in Datacrons yeah and if you don't care about Datacrons very skippable right exactly so cool uh, um, have you ever bought one of these? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. That's yeah. why no one will remember your name. No. <laughs> that was extreme. <laughs> that was... <laughs> just on quoting... my own channel. Come on. <laughs> Jay, just quoting, quoting a movie. That's all. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Um, I'll remember it. <laughs> character review? Sarah, On that right? happy note? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With yeah. no H. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, move right along to character review. <laughs> okay. So this one kind of ties into the, the title update because we've got a lovely new um, icon. Yeah. Featuring Yay. Mando. Mando. Where's my Mando? He's the blue one there in the sea of red. There's three blue ones, so. But the other ones were on the side, and this one was surrounded by red. Fair. It's trying to help. Fair. Gosh. All right. So OG Mando, not not uh, Beskar Mando. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. So. We've got. What do you think? I, I I like him. Like I I use him with my bounty hunters all the time. Yeah, you have him Relic 5. Like, you could put Datacrons on his squad. That's why he's Relic 5. Duh. Yeah. So I can use... <laughs> I can use all that data cache and Datacron. So much data cache, yeah. Um, okay, but he... I think, like, the biggest thing that he is known for is his, like, basically instant kill, annihilate type of ability. Disintegrate, yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's the one. Yep, and a lot of bounty hunter builds are based entirely around getting that so quick that you get to kill someone before your opponent takes a turn. Right, so if you can do that, you're laughing, essentially. 
Yeah. Oh, and it's nice, too. Like, he has Bounty Hunter's Resolve. He can't get mm-hmm. it back after he loses it. Like, Boba and Jango both can get it back, but right. uh, Mando just has it once. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly a Bounty Hunter, but I'm not that resolved on it, <laughs> apparently. Which uh, is, but, it's kind of sad that he doesn't get it back. It is, I mean, there was a few times I'm like, okay, well, he's fine now. I can just target whoever I want, because Bounty Hunter's Resolve is the thing that lets him ignore Taunt. Mm-hmm. Target who he wants, and so they kill him. He's really squishy. Uh, so you you kill him. They kill him once though, and you're like, oh, now I have to kill the tank. I, I can't kill like the the really good stuff, the juicy center. You know. Yeah, yeah. You can't go after the the threat that's hiding, kind of thing. Right. Uh, yeah. So he. I mean, it, the really tricky part about him is you have to do some math because. You have a lot of different factors, especially in GAC. It's like, okay, if you want him to go first, if you want, you can get a disintegrate first, but you have to make sure, like, you use aura lead, mm-hmm. and so everyone takes their, you know, if they if they do an action at all, whether it's in their turn or outside of it, then you get ten percent toward your contract. So you have Vosco first; he taunts, so then he has a he has a um, buff on him. You have to be buffed when you take that action too. So right. he taunts. Then Grief calls a mass assist. You want him to be one speed slower. Calls the mass assist. Everyone assists. Um, and then Bosk, who is taunted, also is frenzy from from taunting. And then he calls a mass assist. Uh, so that then you're at like ninety ish percent. Yeah. Uh, so then you need Aura to go next, or someone to go next, before Mando. And so it, it ends up being, he needs to be one of the slowest characters in your entire roster. Mm-hmm. Because he also, when he crits, he gains 30% turn meter. Right, so you don't want him to gain the turn meter and then basically be taking his turn, but not have his disintegrate up. Exactly. So, yeah, it, it's a pretty bizarre, like, you have to, you also have to incorporate Zam and how much speed she's giving the squad. And, I mean, I just have a calculator that, that does it, you right. know. I'm it's actually, available. I'm curious mm-hmm. how fast mine is, because I can't remember. 244. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, it, you know, like, you, you have them clocked, though, right? Like, you've used a calculator. Yes, they are clocked. Yeah, and that that's an important part, like... Being able to, I mean, it, it's such a nice thing to be able to just go in and disintegrate Mal- Darth Malak right now, if you can. Mm-hmm. Just like, all right, he's gone. The rest of the squad, it can be annoying, and maybe I'll still lose. But, like, Malak is, or sorry, I said Malak, Malgus. Malgus, yeah. Is just gone. Right, and then you can go and clean up afterwards if you had to. Right. I mean, that that's what I've done on my alt before. I'm like, man, I could kill all the GLs with off-meta stuff, but I, I don't have a Malgus counter. So <laughs> burn, burn cooldowns and then have Bounty Hunters just uh, tiptoe in, disintegrate Malgus, and then clean up. Right. Um, um, other than his disintegrate, though, what else do you feel is important? Well, okay, so... With his disintegrate, because I didn't realize this until I think you might have told me because I wasn't mm. paying attention. Um, so you can obviously get disintegrate more than once in in a battle. Sure. Um, I did not realize this until it wasn't happening. You need, is it crit chance or crit damage? Yeah, you need a buff, one, one of those two, and you only get that if... Well, maybe, maybe someone could just hand it to you. Um, mm-hmm. But the most common way you get it is by him just doing a basic. Like, can you click on the basic yep. real quick? Yeah, so yeah. he gains it for, he gains crit chance up for two turns. Yep, and that, that's enough uh, mm-hmm. to be able, but yeah, that activates your, like, that. that's a really key component. And so I actually, like, that. that's how I mod him is with a ton of crit chance because the other part of it, of his kit, um, mm-hmm. if you go into probably his unique is my guess. Um, Not his payout. Yeah, so when, yes. when he scores a crit, he gains 30% turn meter. And if he's not consistently critting, then he's not able to get, uh, like, he's not getting his turn meter. That I didn't realize that. that his turn meter gain was also giving the other bounty hunters 15% turn meter. Right, which is why it's such a, like, because turn meter, it, you know, it's a percentage equation. That's why you have to do a calculator, because there, there's so many moving parts. It's like, okay, 
how much you know zam gives 60 percent uh mm-hmm. you know like she, she so however fast she is she gives a certain amount of her speed to people uh alongside you know like however much natural speed they have but then they call an assist and, or mass assist and mando gains 30 percent. everyone else gains 15 percent right and then, they, and then they do it a second time with bosk and it's uh you know it can it's enough to make your head swim well, yeah, because then, you, like, you theoretically would want to keep them in line so you can kind of just keep this cycle going. Yeah, it's, it, you know, I've made videos about it before. It, you can, you can do it. It's just, um, you know, if you're just trying to do it on your own and you don't have a calculator, you don't know the math, like, you're going to have to test it a lot. Like, right. you know, do, do, like, galactic challenges. Sometimes those will have teams that you can test it on and stuff like that. Right. But, um, or just watch a Zareth video, you know. Yeah, and use the calculator. Shameless plug on your channel, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was your calculator that I used to double check it. So, um, yeah. So okay, so you need that that one of those two buffs though to have disintegrate be available to you to actually use. Yes, ma'am. Um, <laughs> key factor for people who don't know that, but. So, yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, that was it. All right, the, the one other thing I want to point out is uh, sometimes people are using Fennec lead to counter Lord Vader. And right. so sometimes you want Mando there because he gets his contract so quickly because mm-hmm. uh, with Fennec, it's just dispelling debuffs. And Lord Vader's like, hey, you want debuffs? I, I got debuffs for you. And everyone's like, yes, please. Uh, sign me up. So, <laughs> so then he he disintegrates the Relic Nine Royal Guard that you had no idea how to kill before. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the really nice thing is after that, like a disintegrate on a Galactic Legend doesn't do that much. Uh, but his assist move, his first special, yeah. um, calls Fennec. Yeah, calls Fennec to assist, which she's the one who she's the killer there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you like you kind of want to wait till she's got her armor shred on Lord Vader. Uh, but then you. Like she gets to, she gets to ramp up so nicely because, you know, she's the lead, so she's ramping. But then she also has Bosk calling mass assists, Grief calling mass assists, and Mando calling her to assist as well. Yeah, so she's just doing all the hits. And one of the really nice tricks is uh, because Mando can ignore taunt, he can call her to assist on a character that Grief or Bosk mm-hmm. wouldn't normally be able to. Like they're they're like, okay, we're well, we're stuck on the second tank or whatever. And Mando's like, all right, we can still target Maul, me and me and Fennec. So yeah. we're gonna target Maul and snipe someone out from the back while while you're still stuck on the tank. I didn't even think of that. That's a great point. And then uh, you, he, get, you get rid of the next scary guy. He he has a lot of functionality with mm-hmm. with with Fennec. I I really enjoy that duo when I can use them together. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. So he is overall just a ton of fun. I don't think I've ever used his leadership ability. I couldn't even tell you what it does. Um, <laughs> Why don't you click on it? I don't. <laughs> like, I I barely remember too. I've used it before to get contract. Sometimes that's what you need. Okay. So. Do you want the level eight one or like so? It, it just you could just click on seven. The the eight right. just gives a little extra offense. It's fine. Okay. So you um, got yeah. So when when he's the leader, um, yeah. While while buffed, you have to do crits against enemies twenty times, which mm-hmm. isn't that tough, really. Like like he comes with a buff already, you know, with, with his uh. With with his bounty hunter's resolve, mm-hmm. so he's already buffed. So whenever he hits, you do crits. Um, so sometimes you just want this because you get extra speed from his leadership, right? And remember, it's just scoundrel allies who get speed, so it it can work with other, like it can work with Bam if you want to take Beskar Mando or something, right? If you wanted him on your team as well. Right, or Queel for that. I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend this. Frankly, I, I think the, like, Django lead is probably even better because he gives 30 speed. But uh, this is... Django isn't really functional with bounty hunters these days anyways. He's mostly with, like, Separatists or Mandos. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas uh, Mando doesn't go with Mandos. He goes with bounty hunters, so... <laughs> Not confusing at all. Right. When the Mandalorian is leader, is in the leader yeah. of... 
people are like, oh yeah, well, he's leading Mandos, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I get the feeling that maybe we'll, the next version of Mando, mm -hmm. reaching back from, from our first con earlier conversation on my channel uh, when we first started it, mm -hmm. I feel like if, if we get another Mando, he'll have some kind of leadership for Mandalorians. Like synergy just, with Mandalorians. I would think so. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any other fun tips about him that you can think of that we didn't talk about? Not necessarily. He's, he's just super squishy. Um, if you're really trying to mod him for the best, like, first try to make sure you're at the right speed, that you're clocked to get the contract uh, mm -hmm. in the right order. And then try to get crit chance on him, as much crit chance as you can. Because remember, there are a lot of characters who stack a lot of crit avoidance on their kits now. And mm, good point. so even if he has 100% crit chance, hitting someone with 35% crit avoidance only gives him a net 65% to crit base. Right. right. You want that extra, extra crit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you know where his rifle is from? Just trivia, kind of. Oh, gosh. No. I feel like I should. Uh, so, the original concept art of Boba Fett had him mm -hmm. carrying this rifle. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Like, you can actually look in the in the Star Wars Holiday Special. You have Boba Fett just, like, doing... Uh, the Star Wars Holiday Special is horrible, but there's mm -hmm. a segment with, with Boba Fett doing his thing, and he's carrying this rifle. I did not know that. Yeah, just a fun little lore thing. That's fun. Um... Okay, I think that's it on Mando. All right, let's go make a lot of people think we're jerks. <laughs> I, like that we do, I like that we do the roster host on your channel, so then if people get emotional, they just unsub you. <laughs> so rude. It doesn't always reach me. <laughs> uh, so rude. Uh, I don't wish that evil on you, I promise. Not often, at least. It is a nice perk, though. <laughs> no. I gotta stop. I apologize somewhat Terrible. profusely. Uh, okay, so this is the the next the next roster in line because we just go down the list. Um, Boothinator J and R. Junior. Junior. Is that? Oh yeah, I like that. Maybe it's Junior. Yeah. He's in Poison Phoenix. Is mm -hmm. that like? Is that like a campaign? Like, hey, that's Poison Phoenix. You know. Right. Or, it, like, they are just, like, it's a phoenix that's poisoned. I guess it, that's like a picture of a phoenix or something, isn't it? For the little logo. Isn't that, like, a, a tilted rebel logo? Oh, yeah, but in Rebels, Sabine makes this, and it's Phoenix Squadron, initially. <laughs> and it becomes the Rebel Alliance sim symbol. Okay, so, yes. So, phoenix symbol. So, poison, because it's green. Yeah, like We're... sludge. Blech. So, chromium 2, uh, yes. ways to go in GAC with uh, GP. 4.7 million GP. Oh, fertile ground. Excellent. How dare you not have everything? Uh, Especially right. the fact that you only... Uh-oh. Shock T and the and bad... Uh, the, the legitimately bad batch. <laughs> All right. We're not even there yet. Oh, man. This okay. is cool. This is like prevail man level. This will be fun. All right. So. Ships. Let's see. Okay. So six. I did not look at this beforehand, by the way. I caught, like I looked at characters. I didn't look at ships. Oh. So um, they have a Relic 8 General Kenobi. Right. And they have a five star, as you call it, Battle Bee. Battle B, yep. Oh, my lord. This uh, is fun. I haven't been able to rant about how dumb it is that people don't... Why is he, why is he gear 13, or level 13 on the Y-Wing? Oh, that is so weird. <laughs> it's That's... like he was trying to get to a certain GP threshold, and he was just, like, upgrading random stuff to get him to exactly oh. 4 million or something for the screenshot. That's so random. Um... Oh my gosh, I'm totally okay. So add so finalizer, Radis, other Radis, and Executor are the missing capital ships. 
right? Uh, like all the well, yeah, the the two good ones. So, I'll I'll say this: like even at four million, you sh- you should absolutely have good progress toward executor or profundity. And, and I'll tell you this: like not not even trying to rag on this person, uh, mm-hmm. you know, smaller account and all that. Uh, he's in Chromium. Chromium does not help you understand the severity of how each like if you go up to erodium it requires more fleets and then you go up to kyber and it requires even more right you absolutely need to be looking at your fleets right now like not not later not like you need and the negotiator there's no excuse for your battle b to be right five stars like there is like the rebel y-wing i guess maybe if you're not going for profundity right away if you're going for executor first but whoo horrific that that is egregious that is such a good i mean it's not like the best tank but man so functional within the negotiator fleet yeah and i mean you make a really good point too because if you're focused on or if you're only looking at what you have to do right now in terms of your fleets for grand arena then you're you're not going to be ready when you inevitably do climb up and get promoted you're just gonna um, ping pong back down so and, and I'll say at that level too, if you can get one of the the top end fleets and just put it on defense, mm-hmm. and your opponents don't know how to beat it because they don't at that level, um, you'll just win a ton of GACs. Like right. you'll just sprint your way to a rhodium. Not to mention it's going to make your fleet arena even better too. Yeah. Hey, um, look, a level seventy three Razor Crest. I was hoping we'd see a level seventy three Razor Crest. <laughs> oh, a level one Bam. Oh. Sad. Sad. I'm so confused, man. Okay. All right. Like, uh, so it, it, pe- people give me flack for, I'm like, you, you should be farming everything. And mm-hmm. I just still stand by that. Farm everything. Like, some of this stuff, maybe you haven't had time to do, but you should prioritize farms until you have everything seven stars. Except for maybe in, in Cantina. Cantina is maybe the exception, but. Right. Like, I- work on your stuff, man. I, I mean, like, you can you can prioritize to, like, specific ships. Like, Houndstooth is, has been around in the meta for years. That <laughs> Oh, my gosh. How can, did I miss Houndstooth? But, like, like, that's an easy one to prioritize to get to seven stars. Right. Well, we were talking about foundational characters and right. teams. And, and it's like, Bosk, I, I mean... But with my Professor X or my Prevail Man account back when I was using him, like Bosk was one of my first relic characters. Right. Or yeah, uh, because of ships or just in general. Well, because number one, because bounty hunters are so crazy fundamental important to every aspect of the game. And mm-hmm. number two, and, and he's a really important part of all of that. And number two, because he's, he, especially at the time, he was just the best ship in the game almost. Like. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, amazing. And he's a requirement for for the executor yeah. team. Like, no-brainer. Should be working on Houndstooth. Absolutely. The Hyena Bomber at without, like, pi- it's free money, man. Just farm it, and then mm-hmm. it's max level. It's, like, just magically. How many, how many things do you get in this game that it's like, hey, I don't actually have to upgrade anything else. I just get stars and I'm done. Well, and he's got a Relic, yeah, Relic 7 Grievous, so. Yeah, like. The, that would be good. This just shows he doesn't prioritize ships. And at, at Chromium, I guess I don't necessarily blame him a ton. Right. Uh, look at uh, poor Cad Bane driving his five, five star Xanadu. But I mean. I'm, I'm just torn because I, I feel like you could. Be on your way to Executor. You've got Cad. You've got Boba. You know. (laughs) Five star Hans Falcon. (laughs) 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 Ha (laughs) ha. You make bad choices. All right. Where's Plo? Okay, there he is. Is he okay? No, (laughs) he's not really. (laughs) He has seven star somehow. (laughs) Wow. Uh, Okay. Managed it. He did it. That son of a bee did it. He did it. Farm your houndstooth, though. 
and your pilotless ships that don't require you to gear up the pilots for them. Like, right. no brainer. So easy. Right. Okay. Do you want to look at the Datacron tab, or do you just want to dive into it? Yeah, let's, let's just see what they do. It's always... <laughs> I just wonder why he even pushed the upgrade button for level 2. Like, what? <laughs> like he's like, I guess I'll just push this once. Why not? I mean, sure, why, why not? Just spin not? the wheel. Never use it. Okay. Okay. So two GLs, Kenobi and C. All right, and and uh, Malgus is supporting with Relic Nine. Mm -hmm. I like I like the Relic <laughs> Nine on Malgus there. You do? Fact. Yeah. Just checking. Yeah, uh, Mal Malgus is is in my top five for Relic Nine priority. Like I I think he should be Relic Nine before some Galactic Legends. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm not saying to take them to Relic Nine. I'm just surprised that Malgus is Relic Nine before C is Relic Eight. Yeah, I mean there there's some weird priority fails there for sure. Um, I am happy that he at least has Cat to go with Kenobi, and he didn't get Kenobi without Cat. HK is Relic Seven. Yes. Wow. So uh, I get the sense that this guy's like uh. He's, a, he's one of those guys who, like, takes one team and finishes it before he moves on to the next. Maybe? Like, he hyper-focuses it. What would you like to look at, then, to see if you are right? I'm already not getting any pleasure from looking at any of this, so... Uh, <laughs> you saying, what would I like to look at, is just not really helping. Uh... What There's a lot of Relic 7s for there, this size roster, though. There are a lot of Like, there are Relic 7s that I don't even know if I have. But they have more Relic 7s than probably my alt does at, at 8.4. I don't even know if I have HK at Relic 7. Why would you? He's worthless. He, uh, is ab he has a Datacron right now that made me put him at 7 on my main, but my alt is like, ah, no thank you. Not worth it. Uh. Okay. Look, Piet, Piet is only Relic 5, though. That's that's super funny. He's like, hey, HK, Relic 7, you're good. Piet, oh. only Relic 5, because I don't need him, apparently. So well, I need I was, a ship. <laughs> I was just going to say that the executor requirements aren't ready to go, so he can live at Relic 5 for a little bit. I'm embarrassed for him. Um, Let's, let's just look. We know he doesn't have the Ooh, ships. So and then we'll look at speed. Oh, do you like want me to do that first? Priority. Actually, yeah, I just want to see. What has okay. he got? And then okay. I like where your head is at with bounty hunters. Let's see where his speed. Okay, so Darth Revan's fastest other than the GLs. How fast is he? He is 360. That's some good modding, actually. That, that's that's, uh, that's faster. Fast. That is crazy fast. I'm, I'm, I'm actually... Despite myself, fairly impressed. What about Gideon? Yeah, that is real fast. Holy, okay. Gideon, 350. Yeah, all right. So he's, he's got some decent mod priority. That's good. Good yeah. to hear. Good to see. That's really fast. Yeah, I mean, you still got a long ways to go. Like, you know, mm -hmm. my Moff Gideon on my main account is, you know, 380. So, like, you could really, really... Like, add but, another speed arrow to it, but... But for 4.7... I'm impressed, despite myself, yeah. yeah. And, and it looks like the characters have good priority. Like, Ahsoka, you want fast. Shock mm -hmm. T, in certain circumstances, you want fast. Mm -hmm. Piet, you want fast. Like, all of these characters you want fast. And they are. The Dark Basti is questionable. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, as, as like, uh, a what? Like, top 10? The 10th fastest on the, on the roster? Right. That's a little bit like, well, maybe you went too far. Like, look at look at her. Is she modded with health? Let's see. She's clearly got speed sets. She's got yeah, it's a speed set. Can we look at her stats? At her stat gains? Mm-hmm. So a little bit emphasis on health. Alright. Like th this is wasteful. You you really mm -hmm. don't no, you do, you don't need her at three twenty eight. Or three twenty four, sorry. Three twenty four. Yeah. But alright. All right, so mod game, 
decent, in fact. Good, good mm-hmm. for this guy. Uh, let's find. Let's look at their horrible bounty hunters. <laughs> uh, oh. Okay. I don't know. I laughed, and then I made myself so sad. Uh, I mean, it looks like. I mean, he's gearing uh, Dengar. He's gearing IG. It looks like Boba. A Zeta on Greedo. Look at you. Oh boy. And a Jew of Peach. Um. All right. Oh, okay. this is. You gotta farm Bosk too. I didn't realize Bosk was five star as well. Same as Houndstooth. I think it's very fitting that we were talking about good foundational squats, and I was like, bounty hunters are so important. And they he's are like, important. And he's like, nah, man, I only have 12 unlocked, even. They are important. Um, <laughs> man, okay. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's, I'm sad. I'm <laughs> uh, where, where? Jedi, it's, please. Jedi, okay. Which, I mean, he's got Kenobi, so. Okay. All right, he's got Revan at Relic 7 for some reason. Yeah, like completionist okay. all over. Like even even Relic Basti, even though she doesn't have her Zeta. Like take right. take the Zeta off of Greedo and put it on Basti. Thank you. <laughs> um, She's a great secondary or tertiary Jedi leader. Mm-hmm. Hoda is just uh, hanging oh, out. He's a little sad. He could use some, some more gear. He could. Um, it's not awful, I don't think, in terms of priority. Yeah, there's no Jedi Luke here, of course, because Hermit Yoda right. isn't geared. But, all right, at this level, that, that's probably fine. Okay. Um, do you want to look at Rebels? Sure. And then we should probably cut this loose. This is a longish episode. Okay. We've got a rebel squad. And there are right. five across the board. They have their Zetas. Mm-hmm. Like, like, put your Datacron on them. Yeah. Okay. I I don't know. I At, at this level, I, I can't really fault the total lack of attempts. Like, and it looks like he's farmed Rebel Officer Leia, so... Yeah. It, like, he's working on... I mean, Jedi, Jedi Knight Luke has suddenly overnight become... Because job is so important, but then you also use him to... I mean, you use him on a lot of teams that are, aren't on a Galactic Legend, but you also use him to unlock Jedi Master Luke. Like, Jedi Knight Luke has overnight become one of the most important character farms early game players can be focusing on. Yeah, absolutely. Like, he's the he's the key holder to several important... To several key teams. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting these characters up for the Jedi Knight Luke. Yeah. Well, good. Right. I'm glad glad that they geared Rolo, or farmed her, I should say. All mm-hmm. right. All right. So, some some gaps that should be filled sooner rather than later. Yeah. Like um, bounty hunters. Yeah. Please stop making me sad. This is... Could you look at the Separatist just real quick, too, for yeah. me, please? Yeah. Separatist was my first faction, full faction that I got, had Relict. Looks like this guy's actually on the way they, there. They're not bad. Looking I for mean, Newt. Oh, there he is. He's gear 12. All gear right. 12. If you don't like Datacrons, I guess you don't need him there. But, I mean, right. it, it's but, it's decent for sep- for this GP, I think, for Separatist. Yeah, I, I don't... I don't think you need much more. So, mm-hmm. all right. Um, look at that. We're ending on a happy note for once. Yeah, we could call it good. Yeah. Um, so go fix your dumpster fire of a roster, and we'll see you later. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> Am I supposed to be? <laughs> no. All right. See you guys.